welcome to Cuts Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 8.2. If you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and if you like this video just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. So this is the circuit which we have for this for this question and we are asked to find the following things. So for the first part of the question we are asked to find the initial inductor current or the inductor current just after zero the capacitor voltage just after zero and the resistor voltage just after zero. This is the first part of the question. So let's do that quickly. So to do that, we look at the time where this circuit was in steady state or we look at time less than zero. As we know that the inductor current cannot change abruptly as well as the capacitor voltage. So the inductor current which we had just before zero will be equal to the inductor current which we have just after zero. And that is why we consider time less than zero. So let's do that. Considering this circuit in steady state, you're gonna have an open circuit where we have the capacitor and a short circuit where we have this inductor. And doing that, we're gonna have something like this. So this is inactive at time less than zero. As you can see from this, it's multiplied by a step function which is active only for time greater than zero. So considering this, this is basically an open circuit and we have an open circuit here because it is in steady state. As I said, capacitor becomes an open circuit over here. So we have VC there, then we have VR over here. And we have a short circuit over here then we have this 6 ampere current source short circuit so this is shorted out we're in steady state time less than zero so now that we have this new circuit we can find the values which we're actually looking for so let's start with vc now if you look at vc it is actually in parallel with a short circuit, right? So anything in parallel with a short circuit is shorted out, which is equivalent to just having our inductor voltage as zero volts. Now for this IL, no current actually flows there because if it actually flows in that direction, then where will it go? It will actually fall off if we were if we wanted to analyze it like that, it would actually fall off because it's nothing. There are no elements on this side. But if you look at this, this is a current source and it actually goes like that. And since there isn't any current here, it's going to go back up. And therefore, it flows in the opposite direction to IL. And therefore, IL flows in the opposite direction to the current source. And its value would therefore be negative 6 amperes the negative of the value of the, of the current source as it is in the opposite direction to that. So that is what we have for the first part of the question in terms of IL and VC. Now going, going to this part here, we're going to look at that from time greater than zero. So for time greater than zero, we're going to look at node B. So this is node B over here. We're going to sum up all the currents leaving and entering that node. So this one over here is VR divided by 5. It's going in as indicated over here. We could take it in any direction, but we just want to factor this VR because we're interested in finding it, right? So factoring this VR, we're going to take it on the positive side with this current going in the positive terminal, and it's therefore going to be coming into this node, and therefore it's going to be negative. VR divided by 5, and I'm going to say plus this one's going out and that one's going out so both of them are going to be positive il plus six is equal to zero but we want to find the value of this just after zero which is why we have that and just after zero i'm just going to add that just after zero so we have the value of il just after zero which we found over here to be negative six amperes so we're going to take this to the other side of the equal sign and we're going to have vr just after zero divided by 5 is equals to IL just after 0 plus 6. Substituting this value, it's minus 6. So minus 6 plus 6 is what we're going to have on the right side of the equal sign. And therefore, we're going to have VR 
is equals to zero volts. And that is the first part of the question. For the second part of the question, we are asked to find the derivatives of the quantities which we found in the first part of the question. So let's start. We are now at time distance to zero or time greater than zero. And this current source is now in play. So it's now on because it, it is said to be active just after zero or for time greater than zero. So now we're looking at this from time greater than zero. And we know for sure that V is equal to R di over dt and I is equal to C dv over dt. And these quantities or these derivatives are actually in the question. And we can just manipulate each of these to say di over dt just after zero is equal to v across the inductor just after zero divided by l and dv just after zero divided by dt is equal to the inductor, the capacitor current just after zero divided by capacitance. So now we know this value, this value, actually, we don't know this value. We're going to find it shortly. So let's do that quickly. Let's find this value. Looking into this loop over here and going that direction, we're going to have negative VC to go in that direction. We're going to have negative VC plus VR plus VL is equal to zero. Now, looking at these just after zero, so they satisfy this VL just after zero. So VC just after zero, we found in the first part of the question. And the value of VC just after zero was zero, right? So it was zero volts. And our VR just after zero, we found our VR to be zero as well. And we are now left with this VL over here. And therefore VL is equals to a value of zero as well. So it's zero volts as well. Because in the first part of the question, we found our VC, initial VC to be zero, and we found our initial VR to be zero as well. And adding those up and just equating is going to result in a VL of zero. Now that we have VL just after zero, we can substitute it in here, and you'll see that DI over DT just after zero, which is part of the question, or part of answering the question, is equal to zero volts per second. Moving on to this second part of the question, we are going to say the inductor current divided by C is equal to this quantity over here. And to find the inductor current, we actually have it. We actually have the inductor current, which is over here. Right? And this is how we, we can actually go about. So we have to find this inductor current at first. Now that we have this current source active, we can do nodal analysis or KCL at that point. And looking at this as going into the node, it's going to be negative 4. And here we can take this IC. I think it's indicated in the question. If it's not, we're just going to take it to go down. So plus IC just after 0 going down. So it's going to be positive going out of the node. And this is indicated over here as IR. So you're going to have IR, which is the same as, sorry, this is where I should be writing. We're going to have VR just at the zero divided by five, which is the current which flows in that direction. So all those currents are associated with this node, this A node, and we're going to equate all of that to zero. And our aim is to find our IC, and we know that VR of zero is zero, and therefore our IC over here, we're just going to take this four to the other side of the equal sign, is therefore equals to four amperes. Now that we have this, we're going to substitute it in here as well as with the capacitor value. So it's going to be 4 divided by 1 over 5. And the value for that is going to be 20 volts per second. These are two of the three things which you have to find. We're now going to move on to the last part of the question or the last section, right? We want to solve the last section of this question. And we're going to use the same, we're going to use the same equation over here. So negative 4, which is from node A, so at node A, we have negative 4 plus IC 
s starts to zero, then you have plus vr, s starts to zero, divided by five, is equals to zero. Now we're gonna do the derivative of everything here, just so this satisfies, satisfies what we're actually looking for. So the derivative of this is zero, derivative of this is d i c uh, that, divided by dt, right? That is what we have. Then we are essentially going to have plus dvr, 1 over 5 multiplied by dvr, just after 0, dt is equal to 0. And we are interested in finding this value. So 1 over 5 dvr, just after 0, is equal to the negative of dic, 0, that, divided by dt. So this is the... This is our, what's this? This is our inductor current, which which flows, or this is the change in our inductor current. And if you look at this equation, our initial inductor current, we found our initial inductor current to actually be four, but this derivative of that inductor current results in zero. So our dVr divided by dt, just after zero, is zero volts per second. For the last part of the question, we want to find the final values of all of those variables which we've been dealing with. So the final value of the inductor current, the final value of the capacitor voltage, as well as the final value of the voltage across this resistor over here. So now we're looking at the final value where time approaches infinity. So we expect steady state, and therefore this will be an open circuit and we have that resistor over there. Then we have a short circuit over there. And we have the six amperes still in place. So this is our new circuit in steady state. And we're gonna to proceed to find all of the variables which you're actually interested in. So looking at this node over here, we're gonna say four goes into that node, so it's negative. So negative four, then IL goes out, IL infinity, and six goes out as well. So IL infinity is equal to four subtract six, and therefore IL infinity is equal to negative two amperes. So that is one of the values. Moving on to another value, you'll notice that we have this over here in this loop, we have VC and that. So going around this loop in that direction, we're going to have negative VC infinity plus VR infinity. And all of those can be equated to zero. And our conclusion is going to be VR infinity is equal to VC infinity. But now, what are the values? These are the two. So once we find the value, it's going to be the same across these two, and therefore we'll be done solving a problem. So now let's see what that value would be. If you look at this four, it goes in the positive terminal of VR, and using Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, then VR is going to be four multiplied by five, which is equal to 20 volts. And therefore, VR infinity and VC infinity are therefore 20 volts.